In our last video, we got the block cleaned up. Now, it's time to work on the upper half. Got to get these chambers and valves cleaned out. They are just full of all kinds of carbon deposits, as well as getting this gasket surface cleaned up. Need to get these spark plugs and heat shields out, as well as cleaning up all this crusty mess. But before we get to deep cleaning, let's go ahead and get all the valves out. The valves are held in by these two retaining clips. They sit down in a cup and the spring pushes the retainer up so they stay in place. So in order to get those out, we are gonna use this valve spring compressor. It's a pretty simple little job. Just put your compressor down over, find a spot where it'll actually fit into the springs without popping out. Once you get it set up, make sure these little tines in here aren't covering up the clips, otherwise they won't come out. Now it's just a matter of tightening it down to compress the spring. There we go. Sometimes you give it a little pinch down here on the bottom, make sure it's seated well on the spring. You don't want the spring to decompress while you're holding it, because that would not be fun. Now my spring is about as compressed as it's gonna be, so it's time to get it out. To do that, I'm gonna go ahead and tip this up on end, hold my fingers on the back of the valve. Just give the compressor a little tap. Do that. Once it's come loose, just give this a little wiggle. Your clips will fall out and your spring comes off. And your valve will come right out. Ew. That's nasty. Now we just lather, rinse, repeat. Seven more times. Yay. Now that our valves are out, we can remove the valve seals. Go ahead and pull off this gasket while we're at it. Maybe. Holy crap. Oh, there we go. Now we can move on to getting the spark plugs out, get the heat shields out. Spark plugs are easy enough. Just get our spark plug socket, our electric ratchet. And there we go. Now these heat shields are a little bit of a pain in the butt. However, with the split in here, makes it fairly easy to get them out. All you need, one flat tip screwdriver, one hammer. So you go down along that seam, just tap your screwdriver down in there. What that'll do is it'll cause it to fall, fold in on itself, makes it small, and out she comes. Just gotta do that four more times. Now with all the extra parts and pieces off, we can get to cleaning up the side of this with the gasket surfaces. Again, we're gonna go to our trusty super scraper. I have found so far that this thing is amazing. Did a great job on the engine block. Now let's see how it works on the head. Not perfect, but it's a pretty good start. A few more minutes with the super scraper and a wire brush, and she's looking pretty good. So we used our super scraper to clean off the exhaust side of the head, our intake gasket surface, and to knock all the heavy deposits out of our combustion chambers. So by hitting our combustion chambers up with the super scraper and the wire brush, we go from looking like this, all as wonderful carbon deposits, to looking a little more like this. It's again, not perfect. We still got a little work to do. So after a good thorough soak and some gunk degreaser, pressure washing, blow drying, and a soak down in WD-40, she is looking good. We also hit all of our gasket surfaces with the paint stripper disc like we did for the engine block. We still have lots to get cleaned up. All this top end stuff needs to be cleaned. Fortunately, I've already got a good start. We've been working on refining our cleaning process, which is coming along well so far. 
We start with our Berryman's Chem Tool, primarily used for cleaning carburetors, but I found that it works really good for getting all the deposits and that gummy, I don't know what it is, off of our engine parts. Now, while those are soaking, we're gonna move on to something a little more fun. If you remember from the teardown video, we have a couple of exhaust studs that we were not able to get out. One of them's flush. And I said I had a good idea on how to get those out. And that is right here. Don't mind my jury rig welding table here. Essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna lock this off with an angle grinder, run a nut down into it, leave a little bit of a pocket. I'm gonna weld that nut to the stud. The heat running down through the stud should bring it loose and we should be able to get it out. She's snapping, or is she? Oh, well, that was a failure. Looks like we didn't uh, get any penetration on the stud. Guess we'll have to try again. We're gonna hit that with some PB Blaster. I found that it works a little bit better than WD-40 to actually getting down in there. Not that I think it'll help, but who knows? Oops, <laughs> forgot to hit record again. We just got another nut welted onto that stud, put a spacer underneath to give us some room in the cup. Hopefully that lets us get enough heat into the stud to actually get it out this time. Just work it back and forth. Let that PB blaster get down in there. Yes, victory. Next time you need to flip this, and do it right side up so I can just put the impact on there. Cause hit, it seems to work really well. Yay! There we are. I don't even really see how she was stuck. The stud itself is pretty clean. Now we're gonna have to figure out how to do those without welding it to the block. Fun. So what I'm gonna to try to do now is very, very carefully build up just a little bit of a rise here. Hey, <laughs> dumbass. This helps. Now we've got a little stack built up there. We can take a nut, put it over the top of that, weld it to the stack. We'll see how it goes. Nope, that's coming right off. Yeah, as you can see, I'm doing a really good job at failing to do a good job, but at least I'm having fun and learning something. Squirrel! Well, we failed with this thing to the point where I'm out of nuts to keep trying. We got one of the three out. The other two are gonna be really fun. In the meantime, our parts have been soaking way longer than they needed to. I'm failing yet again. There we go. Take these out, kind of sit them there. Pull all of our different parts in the little bucket here. Now that my parts are out, just wanna give it a quick rinse in my water bucket and in a good wipe down. These parts are coming out far cleaner than the last couple of batches I did. I think it's because I spent so long welding. The last batch was in for about 20 minutes and I had to clean up a little more afterwards. This batch was probably in closer to an hour to an hour and a half and uh, it's all coming off, I mean, super clean. So the valve came much cleaner than the last ones did, but still not where I wanted it. So I'm gonna use my super scraper to get the last of the carbon deposits off. I'm also trying very hard not to use the super scraper or any other abrasive on this section of the valve up here that actually travels in the valve guide. 
I want that to stay nice and smooth. For my last bit of cleaning in this valve, yes. We're gonna take some well-worn 280 grit sandpaper and get the last of this discoloration off. Get it nice and smooth so our carbon deposits won't stick to it. Wow. Look at that. Nice and shiny. It's not perfect, but it'll do for our purposes. We also need to go through how we clean the test. Very similar. Why, chainsaw, why? Like our valve train parts, we went ahead and soaked our piston here in the chem dip. But instead of 30 minutes, we did it for about an hour because this thing was gross. Once we pulled it out, we gave it a good scrub down with a wire brush to get all the deposits off the face and out of the inside prior to giving it a good rinse. But that's not all we have to do with our pistons. Our piston rings are still here, so we gotta get those out and get the grooves cleaned out because they're nasty inside. Getting these out's pretty easy. That's all there is to it. Should have a total of five rings. Now that the piston's out, you can see there's still a whole bunch of deposits inside. Plus, fairly sure those oiling holes are plugged. There's three on this side, and there's three on this side. There's a few different ways to clean these grooves out. Last time I did it, I did it with a Dremel and a little wire wheel. These are not as bad as the ones of the 273 were. So we're just gonna take half of a piston ring and you can take this flat edge and just run it through like so and it breaks all those little deposits off. I like to use the compression ring because it fits perfectly in the top two grooves. For the oiling hole, it's just a little piece of mechanics wire run down into the hole, and get any deposits that are inside out. So after a quick wrench, we'll dry it out, and take our towel here, and just kind of run it through the groove to wipe off any excess deposits. If you don't get them all the first time, just go back through and do them again. I do that a lot. I find that the oiling rings work really well for running our towel through the narrow grooves. Now we're all cleaned up and ready for new rings. Sweet. Those are the things that I do to get my cylinder head apart, get it cleaned, and ready to go back on the engine. I'm not gonna bore you with showing you cleaning the other half because it's just more of the same stuff. The last thing we gotta do is get these cam bearings out. And I say these, and I really mean this, because we've already taken the other cam bearings out. But I left this last one in there just so I could show you guys how this cam bearing tool works. The tool itself has this nice expanding head. You just take and very carefully run this through the journals. T get to the one with the cam in it, and it'll slide in place. Once that's in place, we'll take our 7 8 inch box wrench, put it around the end, and go ahead and tighten this up. As we tighten it up, it'll expand this rubber piece to fit close on the bearing, so the bearing sits on this little lip right here. And this lip is what drives the bearing out. Now that we're set, we take this cone and we hold it up tight into the front bearing journal. That keeps our tool nice and straight so we drive it straight out and don't mar the journals. So all we gotta do is start giving it a few smacks. And our bearing's out. Now once the bearing's out, we'll go back in, loosen up the head, and this whole thing will pop right out. Takes the bearing off and just reach down there, and there you go. From here, we just back our bearing tool out nice and easy. And that's all there is to that. Putting them in is going to be a little more complicated, but we'll get to that during the reassembly video. We got a couple of more odds and ends to do. We gotta look at the crank, we need to look at the camshaft. Then we'll be ready to start getting this thing back together. I hope you'll join me for that endeavor because that's the fun part. I hate the cleaning. Thank you for visiting. I hope you learned something. And we will catch you in the next video. Alvida Zane. Believe I'm about to be attacked.